Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and you will be what? Now and again we say, Lord, are we making any impact? Is there anything happening, Lord? And then you see somebody come and said, from the Bible conference, this is my church now. And he'll come and stay in, in a Sovereign Grace Bible Church. And in the course of perhaps some months, he'll say, I want to be a member and so on. So all these, and these are young people coming in. And some of them, uh, because of the new te uh, technology and so on, have on their own, through Facebook and so on, are contacting friends. And we see now and again visitors coming through this Facebook uh, uh, ministry of, of, of these um, this saints. And we are getting that the, what we are doing, the Lord is using it to, to impact on people. So we have some evidence. And uh, over the years, especially in the last two years or so, we've had many young people coming and staying. And uh, indeed, even at, at this time, we have about seven about to join. And about out of the seven, three of them have indicated that they wanted to baptize. And we did, we did have baptisms again in February this year. And even last year, again, we had uh, uh, twice or three times baptisms and so on. So that has, uh, in, that has shown us that the Lord is, is encouraging us, showing us tokens mm -hmm. of uh, the work, of, of, of the results of what we're doing.
Congratulations, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Just you. a little one. Yeah. 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 Speech, speech, speech. Thank speech. you. Speech. Thank you. 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 Thank the Lord that we have the liberty we have to be here even this morning. And that we come trusting that no bomb will come near us even here. But then the rest of the nation are not at peace at this time. With one accord, let's pray. Let's pray. Each one pray concerning this nation. What, what are you asking the Lord to do for Nigeria? Ask now. Father and God, we do pray even for tonight's um, Bible on radio, that God in the name of Jesus as they go for the program at the radio station, that God will take control and let the truth of the world even get to the nooks and cranny of this country in Jesus' name. Yeah. We thank you so much because of the so good to us as students. Lord, we did not lose anyone. We thank you for protection. We thank you for provision. We thank you, Lord, for even granting us the grace uh, for the first coming graduation. We hand it over to you, that Lord, you will take control in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God, for blessing us. And thank you, Lord, for making us child of your blessings. We return all the glory back to you, because we pray thanks given in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Father, as we go now, we pray that your presence will go with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you make our road home accident-free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayer. Amen. At the end of our race here on earth, we pray, Lord, that the kingdom of heaven will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because it is done. For we pray and receive with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's have the grace and fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Lord, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. presents that we give you at Christmas and special times. They come from the church of our Pastor Joe. This is Pastor Joe. Can you say welcome Pastor Joe? Welcome Pastor Joe. Thank you Pastor Joe. Thank you Pastor Joe. Thank you, Pastor Joe. Please say our thank you to Christ Bible Church in America. Our name is Christ Bible Church in America. Thank you to the children of Christ Bible Church. Thank you to the children of Christ Bible Church. Yes. You are welcome. <laughs> and our brother who is taking your picture is called Brother Gerard. Can you say, welcome Brother Gerard. Welcome Brother Gerard. Well, hi everybody, just call me Brother G. Okay. Go for Gerard. I'm calling Brother G. Brother G. Brother G. Brother G. Brother G. Brother G. I think that when you look at the history of work in missions, one of the things that has many times proven to be effective is outreach to children. And so we may not see the benefit of this for years and years, but uh, access to the message of the gospel and training in spiritual things from a young age can lead to great future unanticipated growth that, that we may never even see. But again, the church devotes quite a lot of, of resources, and especially in terms of time, uh, spending a fair amount of their Sunday afternoons in teaching these children. And they need to teach often some basic things like how to read in order to see that the kids have access to, to spiritual things, uh, as well as the, the message of the gospel. And the children come on their own. They see this as they're, they're not being sent by their parents as a way to get a free afternoon. They come because they see this as being valuable for some reason. I don't know how that works in the mind of a child, but uh, 
I would see great reason to believe that God is going to use this to work in the lives of people and convert them and hopefully give them an early inoculation against some of the error that they're going to come across in their environment in, in coming years. And then also just the encouragement that there are members of the body of Christ that love them and that are out to see good for them spiritually and aren't after something, uh, that, that don't want anything from them. Ten Commandments now, up by heart. How many of you? Raise your hand. Okay. Some of you know up to nine. I can see it here. Some of you know up to nine. Does anyone know up to ten? Ten. You know up to ten. That's very good. Oh, Sandra. Oh, they only allowed you to say five, but you know all the ten. Very good. Well done. We thank God for that. Keep these commandments in your heart. The Bible commands us to hide. God's word where? In our heart. Do you know why? We hide God's word in our heart so that we might not sin against him. If we don't hide the word in our heart, we will forget them and we will be tempted and we will fall into sin. Okay, so it's good to keep the commandments in our hearts. And if you have not learned all the turn, hurry up. Don't be left behind. Don't be left behind. Okay, before we sing our choruses, and you know, I have a heap there that we enjoy today. Let's just hear God's word. Okay, when we read from the Bible, who is speaking? God. God. So we pay attention to God. To God. And don't listen to anyone else. Don't let anybody disturb you. Okay, I'm reading from Psalm 34. If you have the Bible, open with me. Psalm 34. And uh, welcome, 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 lovely lady. Welcome. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Ooh, beautiful. Okay, isn't she lovely? Yes. Little mama, little mamas that came in. Okay, now let's hear from God. Psalm 34, I'm reading from verse 11. God is when sometimes you ask them, what, what do you think about this person? You hear that, no, they're, that they're not feeding, they're not getting much, uh, much you know, good, good feeding from some such. So, then uh, Femi and, and uh, Corona joined the church and for maybe one or two years they were there and so on. Then Femi said he felt like going to, um, to be trained. He had his own thoughts and agenda which he didn't let me know but he said he was going there. So I said fine. So he went. And then it was during his absence that the need for help was there. Was, it was there that, that I, I had to say, okay, look, church, we must get an elder. And of all the male that, have, that are there and those are, who are still members of the church, let's, I want you to, I didn't even make any recommendation. All I said was, everyone, please, from all the males, put, take those that you would uh, want to be a teaching elder in the church secretly. So the papers were passed out with all the names of the people and everybody took the family's name. You know? But then he was away, so I had to send a word to him and say, look, the church has said you, they will lay their hands on you as one that will uh, teach them and, and, and feed them. What do you say? He accepted. And so I announced to the church that this is the, the next elder. But then, um, when we waited for him to come back, but just before he came back, you know, there was this feeling that probably London will take him. <laughs> and I felt, you know, I cried to God, I said, God, please help, please help. And, uh, and indeed, they almost took him. <laughs> but then, um, 
in God's providence, uh, he was arrested and he was brought back. <laughs> arrested by God. <laughs> and he was brought back. And I, you can imagine my relief and um, how happy I was that he came back. And lo and behold, we did request that he should come and, uh, and confirm and, and ordain him. 210 to 210 you came and ordained him and you know you can see the result of, of all that God has done in Sovereign Grace Bible Church. Last year in 2010 November mm -hmm. you accepted the call and you were ordained to the gospel ministry. Yes. As you had hands laid on you by the church members and the pastors what were your thoughts at that moment? Um, the moment at that time, it was humbling for me. And I was just saying to myself, I don't have anything to offer. I don't know what they have seen for them to say they are calling me into eldership. But then, if I'd said yes to them, God possibly made me to say yes and I said to myself you must help me at this time you must help me in every sense of it there is nothing for me to say I want to gain in the sense that I have a lot to trust the Lord God for because he has helped me even when I didn't have anything he helped me so this time around I'm only waiting for him to fill me and then to know that somebody has already gone ahead has tested the waters and that's Pastor Tony now and then coupled with the fact that you've been in the ministry that um, you people are there at least to be some kind of a guide to whatever I'm going to do within this ministry but for me then I still wasn't sure how everything would pan out. I was not sure, you know, with respect to, but then I was trusting God that, look, fill me. Empty vessel, you need to fill me, you need to help me if I have to feed your people because I don't want to stand in the day of judgment and then you say, I didn't ask you to do this. This was not what I asked you. But then, at that period, you know, there was a kind of, um, I won't say release, as they say, a kind of peace that, look, I will guide you, don't worry, and I will strengthen you. And I believed all of that, that God was using human agents as well to tell me that, look, go and just follow whatever I've asked you to do. And, but it was really, really humbling for me at that time. driving force, philosophy, is William Carey's message. Believe God for great things, but then you do what? Attempt great things for God. By attempting great things for God, we have seen the blessings of God since men will be graduating today. It is not the end. It is actually the beginning of their journey in learning. They have just been given the basics. It is for them now to begin to build upon what they have learned. Pastor Tony mentioned that it was amazing how God raised up the need for the seminary among the pastors who asked for deeper training, more structured theological training. And both he and you, as the coordinator of the seminary, have worked very hard since 2009, two years, in training this first group of students. How did you feel last Saturday when you saw the first group 
of six men, the first graduating class of Christ Pastor Seminary, received their certificates of completion? Uh, for me, it, it was such a fantastic thing in the sense that this is not any man's work. You know, this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our own sight. In our own weakest state, in, uh, with all our insufficiency and the rest, God pouring himself into us and helping us even to see this um, group of people who have given their best shot to whatever that we are there to give them because um, you, look at, you look at it and you wonder to yourself if you're believing God for something and it does not materialize quickly, what do you do? Do you fold your hands or you continue to believe him and continue to do what he asks you, uh, what he asks you. So you continue to trust him. So the result of that is the fact that God is not looking for us, like you will say, the way up is down. So it was rock bottom for us. We started that way and this student also followed this rock bottom way because it wasn't as if they have air conditioner, overhead projector, all those things. Sometimes the place is too hot, no electricity, we don't have money to power the generator, and they still stayed. So when they graduated, I just cast my mind back to the Ebenezer's of God, that this is God himself in action. So all glory goes to him. Hey, nobody can share it. We're not sufficient in whatever that we're doing. We had no, no power to keep them. They had no reason to stay. But then God held them. Some of you are still waiting on your ministry, and I say, therefore, as the Apostle Paul says, and him that ministers, wait on your ministry. If you wait as Moses did, I guarantee you, as reluctant and ambivalent as you may be, as you enter ministry like this man did here, the Lord will bless your ministry. Look, eight years later, or nine years later from 02, when this church started with 12 members, look at what the Lord has done. None of us foreseen any of this. None of us premeditating any of this. None of us pre-planning any of this. But God has done it. Has He been perfect? No. He has stumbled every step of the way. <laughs> and you know what? So have I. And I still stumble. But the Lord picks me up. If I'm sincere and I return after I stumble and I go and I say, Lord, I shot myself in the foot again. Get me out of this mess. And I learn the lesson. I learned in the school of Christ, that invisible seminary, learn the hard lessons. Don't repeat those stupid mistakes you make. And say, Lord, give me a good memory to recall those lessons. You will be blessed. And your efforts will be owned by God. And you will see much fruit. Nigeria is out there. It is ready. The harvest is white. But the laborers are few. And now we are doing our small part with the help of God. 
to send out a few laborers. But remember the mustard seed is the smallest seed. But in the end, it can bring forth the most fruit and it is the biggest plant. Despise not the day of small things. Just be faithful. Do not put your eye on man. Put your eye on God. Do not judge by appearance. Have faith in God to do His work. Be not weary and well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That's my ministry verse which God 25 years ago had to teach me in a very hard lesson. Don't encroach upon God's territory in doing the work. Do your part. Do what He commands you to do. And wait on Him. And sit back and behold the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you were able to gather every Protestant and Evangelical pastor in the nation of Nigeria, put them all in a stadium and have a conference and speak to them from your heart and give them a list of three or four things that you would call them back to do in terms of returning to the work of the ministry, what are those three or four things that you would plead with them to start doing? It's, it's, it will go back to the pillars of reformation. We'll tell them come back to the Bible, come, come back to the Bible. Um, we we'll tell them to, to train, to train their people, to equip their people. We we'll tell them to truly repent, to turn and see that Christ is the Lord and that we should honor Christ and we would indeed uh, move on to a spiritual ministry and live off, go awake entirely from uh, this opulence and all that, that, um, that should Christ-likeness. We'll cry to them to lead us to, to remember um, that there's a judgment coming and so on. And they should go back to the Bible. So it's really going back to the Reformation, um, telling them about the solus all the all the solos in the Reformation. That's what one would stress to them. Sola Scriptura, Sola Christa, Sola, Sola Gratia, Fidei, Sola and then Fidei. Uh, Sola Gloria, Deo Gloria. So mm. That's what we're going to, do, to stress, to go back to the Bible. Just like we had this conference in 2011, um, Sufficiency of the Scripture. That is the aim to get them back to see the Bible. Many have left the Bible. Many are reading what their general overseers have written. They are not reading the Bible anymore. Can you give us your thoughts of the conference, the 2011 Bible conference hosted by Sovereign Grace Bible Church of Lagos this last Thursday and Friday? What were the highlights of the conference for you? The, the messages that came from the, the speakers were apt and clearly to the point of making people and many did express that for the first time they are seeing certain things that they had not seen before. Draw all peoples to myself. And when you preach Christ from the scripture, you are lifting him up for all to behold him in the fullness of his glory and his work and his person. And when he is lifted up in the eyes of the people, as you preach him and as you describe all of who he is in his person and work, he will draw people to himself. Not to you, but to himself. Amen? Amen. Go back to the scriptures. They are sufficient to teach you more than you can ever handle for a thousand lifetimes about the unsearchable, unfathomable riches of Christ. And as you rejoice in discovering more of these riches, preach them to the people. Bring to them what the Holy Spirit has allowed you to discover of Jesus Christ. I delight when God shows me something about Christ and I enjoy Him, I absorb what He has shown me in my spiritual man, and I just, I just absorb it as liquid love in my heart, and I can't wait to stand before the people and say, you know what the Lord showed me in such and such a passage, such and such a text, 
about the loveliness of Christ, about the preciousness of our Savior. Do you know what the Lord showed me here? And I would teach them what it means because I've already enjoyed it in my heart. I've rejoiced over it in my mind and I've been quickened by it in my spirit. Amen? So what are we doing as pastors? What are we supposed to do? We're to be discovering more and more of these delectable delights of Christ in his character, in his work, in his atonement, in his offices, in his roles, of who he is as the second person of the Godhead. And the more we discover, we just bring it to the people. We just bring it to the people. And they rejoice with us, and you will see Christ being formed in the people, little by little. And Paul says he travailed in spirit, he had spiritual labor pangs day and night until Christ was formed in the people. That was his driving, obsessive goal and desire not to rest in his ministry, not to be content with any substitute except seeing the reward of his labors in Christ being formed in the hearts and minds and characters of the people of God. What a glorious task, what a wonderful privilege that God would use me as a speck of dust, a grain of sand, chaff blown in the wind, a nobody, a nothing, undeservedly saved, that God would use me as a channel by which he would transform others in the church into the very image of Christ by preaching Jesus Christ through the scriptures. He gave them in an altar, with a sacrifice to be killed, to, and to be burnt up, and later on it translated to the tabernacle, and from the tabernacle it went to the temple. All these are to, God is saying, I am so near you and you are not able. All right, this is the way to come. You must come through the blood sacrifice, and these are the things you should do. And as soon as you do this thing that I have revealed, I will commune with you and I will bless you. That's the picture we have in Moses' time. And now, let's go to New Testament. In John chapter 1, that's where we'll stay for some time. John chapter 1. Remember what we are doing? I'm presenting these scriptures to you for you to make up your mind about worship. Let's start from verse 17 of John chapter 1. This connects Moses' time with the New Testament time. In John chapter 1, verse 17, it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I don't need to say much more. I have told you that during Moses' time, the law came, and the law said, God is so near. In him we live and move our, and have our being. All he's desiring is that man should seek and feel after him. And they are not able. And therefore God had to mediate by giving them the temple and the, and the tabernacle and all the other things that are there. So that by grace they can commune with him. So the law came by Moses. But then, in 17, grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. Wonderful. Grace that the Lord brought and gave them the altar with the bloody sacrifice and all the other things. That grace now has come in Jesus Christ. Wonderful. And the discussion part of the, the, the program uh, enabled us to uh, hear the participants uh, express the things that were stirred up within their minds and uh, for the first time some of them started seeing that uh, they had not actually read the Bible well and, and that they have been deceived by their, their, their teachers. When the elders believe, believe and trust in God to heal the person it is faith in Jesus Christ which brings about the grace of God to heal the person. It is not the oil. It is faith in Jesus Christ. But not all the time is it God's will for a person to be healed. Because again, when we 
interpret the scriptures properly. We have to compare scripture with scripture. We cannot pull a verse out of context. So when we visit the subject of sickness and the need for healing in the Bible, and we look at all the verses in the New Testament on the subject, we see a verse like um, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 10 or 12, where the Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh, and he prayed three times that the Lord would remove that thorn. Certainly Paul prayed in faith, did he not? And the Lord responded and answered him and said, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. The annual Bible conference of Sovereign Grace Bible Church was concluded a few days ago. In accordance with the conference, you held three radio programs on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What is your take on the response from the radio program? It was, um, um, it, it was surprisingly pleasant. I mean, in the sense that the the radio, what went out on the airwaves was something that we, I, I expected or I thought that people responding will say, don't touch my the Lord's anointed, you know, they would say to, why are you people condemning and so on, because the radio programs came telling, telling of the evil in the church and that people should take a stand, that the line has been drawn in the sand and that God is going to judge, you know, that kind of uh, very strong um, rebuke in the church in Nigeria. And we expected that when the, the phone calls were allowed in, in the two days, that people were going to say, you people are wicked people, why are you condemning the church in Nigeria and so on. But instead, we saw people saying, yes, 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 we're dying, the church is Instead of helping us, the church is eating us. I mean, you, you know, they, they were tired. You could, you could feel the sheep crying for help. And so that was my take. And I was really surprised because usually, well, I expected people to say, look, leave us where we are. We're okay. You come in. Who are you to tell us all off and so on? But instead of saying, yes, where are you? Where are you? People were crying, asking for help. That was. The thing it really surprised me, and the hunger now is, uh, or the burden. It's not even a hunger; it's a burden, a major burden. How do we get to these people? How do we get to them? The radio it was just uh, call, call it a flash in the pan. It just came and it went, and these people are all out there. Many of them are out there. What are we going to do to see how to ask the sheep or get to the sheep to to get them back? That it would be a major problem. So the radio program has left a burden in, in Lagos and I don't know what to do concerning how to reach out to these people who are, who are asking and begging that something be done. I don't know how to do In 2002, after Sovereign Grace Bible Church was organized officially, the church covenanted together and you were, you were officially ordained. A few days later, you were interviewed about your feelings and sentiments concerning all that had taken place. And at the end of that interview, you were asked what hope was there that the work that God planted at that time would progress and prosper and expand. Can you say now, today, nine years later, that some of that hope was realized? And if so, what hope do you have for the future of the continued growth and expansion of the work of God here? Hmm, hope. Hope is in Christ, and that which he has started, he will complete. Um, so he just wants us to be faithful, be faithful and 
hope in him. And we pass on this hope in him to others to say hope in him. And we do our best to equip the saints that he has brought our way. And he has supported and helped us to hope by the ones that he has brought around us. There are hindrances, there are things against, I'm fighting against us, but now and again he keeps us hopeful because of, um, call it beautiful times that we have opening the Bible and seeing him speak and personal devotions and even uh, in Bible study and so on. And you say, look, the lampstand has not been quenched and he is, he is our hope. And that's the hope we have. Whether we're going to expand and be 10,000, I don't know. I don't know. But I'll just be hopeful and be faithful in that which we have at the moment and do our best. Hope is in Christ, and that which he has started, he will complete. Um, so, he just wants us to be faithful. Be faithful and hope in him. And we pass on this hope in him to others, to say, hope in him.